In the past couple of videos, we learned about some key pieces of information that we can glean by looking at an NMR spectrum. Namely, we looked first at the chemical shift, the position along the x-axis where we see a particular signal as an indicator of the chemical environment that that particular proton is in. In other words, as an indicator of the types of functional groups that are surrounding the proton that we are measuring in the NMR spectrum. We then looked in the last video at multiplicity, which is the concept that the signals we see in an NMR spectrum are split into these multiplet patterns based on the number of hydrogens that are vicinal to the one that is being measured in the signal. Now what we are going to do is complement those two pieces of information with a third piece of information that will help us on our journey of determining the complete chemical structures of organic molecules. And that key piece of information is the integral, the size of the signal or the area under a particular signal in an, in an NMR spectrum. So if we look at and evaluate um, using computer analyses, the area under a particular signal, the area under a signal is proportional to the number of protons that make up that signal. So the area under a signal is proportional to, which I'll use the alpha symbol to indicate proportionality. So the area under a signal is proportional to the number of protons comprising that particular signal. So in other words, if you are looking at the signal for a methyl group, that will integrate to a larger value than the signal for a CH2 group. And the specific values or ratios of those integrals will indicate to us how many protons are comprised in each signal. This will be represented to us in a couple of different possible ways. One, if you see in your NMR spectrum numerical values listed, such as the three, the six, and the one that I've circled here, those indicate the integrals. So what this is telling us is that where we see the number six, that indicates that there are six protons or some multiple of six protons. Here, this refers to three protons or a multiple of three. And this refers here to one proton or a multiple of one. So this indicates here that we have a one proton signal that has a multiplicity equal to seven because there's seven little sub peaks there. Here we have in the middle a three proton signal that is a singlet, a single peak there, meaning there are no vicinal hydrogens. And here we have a doublet signal that corresponds to six protons. And so linking that to the chemical structure that we are evaluating here, if we take a look at the two methyl groups that we saw in the last video correspond to a single signal, those would have an integral of six and correspond to the signal that we see over here that also integrates to six. The multiplicity will also um, work out based on the fact that there's one vicinal hydrogen here that causes the signal to equal a doublet. Um, likewise, this signal for the CH group here that I'm circling in blue corresponds to one proton there. Its integral is one. Similarly, our CH3 group here integrates to a total of three protons. So by looking at the integrals, that is going to have us information about how many protons make up a particular signal. And if we see that that multiple is a multiple of three, that's often a strong indication to us that we're dealing with a methyl group because the only or one of the only ways you can really see three protons that are all symmetrical to one another, hence show up as a single signal, is that those are methyl groups. Likewise, if we see six protons showing up as a single signal, that indicates generally that there are two methyl groups that are symmetrical to one another. If we see three um, sets of methyl groups, that would integrate to nine, and that generally indicates that you have a tert butyl group where the three methyl groups are all symmetrical to one another. So let's do an example problem to tie together um, this information about integrals with the information about multiplicities and chemical shifts that we've looked at previously. 
So in this example problem, we're asked to predict the multiplicity and the integral for each signal that we expect to observe in an NMR spectrum of 3-bromo-2,2-dimethylpentane. I strongly encourage you to hit the pause button and try to work through this problem on your own and then check your work by hitting play to make sure that you're understanding these concepts of multiplicity and integrals. I have gone ahead and drawn the structure of 3-bromo-2,2-dimethylpentane here to get us started. So let's take a look at this problem. First thing we need to do in order to predict the multiplicity and integrals for each signal, we need to recognize how many signals there are going to be in this spectrum by picking out the protons that are symmetrical to one another and recognizing that those are going to appear as a single signal, that those are equivalent to one another. So looking at this structure, if we start at the far right-hand side, this methyl group at the far right terminal definitely going to show up as its own signal because there are no other protons that are totally symmetrical to that. So I'm going to highlight that in pink. Coming over one spot in the chain, I'm going to highlight this methylene group, this CH2 group that is, in blue, because there are no other protons that are totally symmetrical to that. Coming to the next position, this CH group that is directly bonded to the bromine, going to show up as its own single signal because there's nothing else in there symmetrical to that. We come to the next position at this carbon here that I'm highlighting. There are no hydrogens directly bonded there, so don't be tricked into highlighting anything there, thinking there's a proton there when there's not. And then finally, we come out to the end here, maybe the trickiest position of the molecule. We have a methyl group here, here, and here. All three of those are equivalent because we can freely rotate around this carbon-carbon single bond in whatever direction we want. So all three of these end up being totally symmetrical within the molecule because they're all bonded to exactly the same carbon atom there. And so therefore, the total number of signals in this NMR spectrum is going to be four, indicated by the four different colors that I've highlighted here. Now, the next task is to predict the multiplicity and integral for each of those signals. Remember that when you're predicting the integral, you just count the number of protons that are contained within that signal. So the integral here at this terminal end, since there's three hydrogens there, the integral is going to be three. The multiplicity, on the other hand, to calculate that, we use the n plus 1 rule. So n plus 1, we count up for n the number of vicinal hydrogens. So coming over from here, we have one carbon that is vicinal. That carbon has two directly bonded hydrogens since it's a CH2 group. So n plus 1 here is going to be equal to 2 because there's two vicinal hydrogens plus 1 gives us three, which we would refer to in scientific terms as a triplet. Coming on to the blue proton set here, this is a CH2 group, hence its integral, the size of its signal is going to be integrated to two. And then the multiplicity of this signal, in order to find that we count up the total number of vicinal hydrogens in and add one. So our total number of vicinal hydrogens relative to our protons that are in blue is going to be, we're going to bring in three vicinal hydrogens looking at the carbon that is adjacent to the right there. So I'm going to plug that in as three. Additionally, there is a vicinal hydrogen here in green to the left. So we are going to add that in as one. So our N value there is equal to a total of four vicinal hydrogens plus one. So four plus one makes five, which means we could refer to this as a multiplet or a pentet, whatever your preference is there. Coming on down the chain, we come to our green hydrogen here. The integral of that is going to be one because remember the integral always equals how many protons make up that particular signal. There's just one proton there, so the integral is one. The multiplicity is equal to the number of vicinal hydrogens. So we look to the left at this carbon, there are no vicinal hydrogens contributed. So nothing to add there. We look to the right, right here, there's a CH2 group. So therefore that's gonna bring in two vicinal hydrogens. So our N plus one rule is gonna be N plus one is equal to two vicinal hydrogens plus one equals three, which we describe as a triplet. So we have a triplet there. Then finally, we come out to the end here. And all three of these methyl groups are going to show up as a single signal. Keep in mind, the integral is determined by the total number of equivalent hydrogens, the total number of hydrogens that are in exactly the same environment, all symmetrical to one another. 
And so there's three plus three plus three because there's three multiple groups. So the integral there is going to be a whopping nine. Then for multiplicity, we count the number of vicinal hydrogens. So to count the number of vicinal hydrogens, we take any one, just pick one of those protons that show up at that chemical shift and count how many hydrogens are vicinal to that. So we look at the adjacent carbon or carbons. The only adjacent carbon is the one right here. There are no hydrogens directly bonded there. And so therefore there are zero vicinal hydrogens. So our N plus one is equal to zero plus one, which equals one, of course. And that's gonna be a singlet. So therefore what we've done in this problem is we've gone through and we've assigned the multiplicity of each and every proton that we would expect to see as well as its integral where the multiplicity is the splitting pattern that's determined by how many hydrogens are vicinal to the one we're measuring. And the integral is how many hydrogens are composed that we are actually measuring there in that signal. So multiplicity relates to the adjacent protons. Integral relates to the actual proton that we are measuring in the particular spectrum. So what we will do next in the upcoming videos is we will apply this information we've learned about chemical shifts, multiplicities, and integrals to work toward solving some additional practice problem types and move toward determining complete molecular structures using these NMR data, much like solving a puzzle.